Is your dog reacting with dogs and people or just dogs? dogs. Just dogs? <laughs> How old is he? Under a year. Under a year? Okay. She's a really excited <laughs> I'll explain to you in a second. Okay. So she's really skilled and she doesn't know what to do with herself. So what we need to do is start to give her instructions, you know. That's going to make it more clear what we expect from her. And we're going to use positive reinforcement to encourage the things we want and then kind of a little bit of pressure and techniques to tell her when she's doing something wrong and then kind of guide her to teach her exactly what we expect. The first thing that I did is just apply pressure to let her know I don't want you barking, you cannot be charging towards me. Uh, I, she also at one point tried to sniff me and I was not letting her because I just built self-control. She doesn't just do whatever she wants. Now she's just sitting there and then I'm starting to release the pressure and she's just sitting there and holding herself. Now see new distraction, before she gets carried away, I just already told her, leave them alone so right. people walk by. Then we're going to gradually build more distractions. But with this type of dog, she doesn't seem like really hard and like headstrong. She sounds like it, yeah. but it's because she's being enabled, uh -huh. you know, at a, at, because she's confused. She right. really doesn't know what you expect from her. You're holding on to the end of the leash and she's just kind of doing her thing. Yeah. So when you do obedience training, she might pick up really quick because uh -huh. she's smart. Yeah. But that's doing nothing for this yeah. because she doesn't know how to handle the situation. Yeah. So that's right. where the problem is. Yeah. It's not a matter of her being, you know, bad. Uh, there's always a reason. Sometimes there's lack of socialization or maybe yeah. they had a uh, situation where it, it traumatized them. You know, it could be a dog charged towards her. Um, Sometimes just personality. They can yeah. really feel a little more scared of other dogs and then they become defensive. Uh -huh. And because you don't know how to communicate with her, it escalates. Now she's so loud about it because it works. The moment she does that, everybody stays away from her, you know? Yeah. Now she's giving us calm submissive right now. Uh -huh. And you can tell she's not doing anything wrong. I'm not holding her tight, right. you know? Uh, now at this point, I wouldn't let her be pacing around. I wouldn't be letting her sniffing at everything. Uh -huh. uh, she's just kind of like relaxing. She's sniffing the ground, that's okay. But I don't want, if someone comes up to us, I don't want her to be worrying about them and checking them out. That's not her job right now. Oh, okay. So when it comes to a dog that has issues like this, uh -huh. you want to make sure that you're always giving them directions. Uh -huh. You don't let them decide. Uh -huh. Just because she's doing great right now, uh -huh. doesn't mean I'm going to let her come and smell me. Uh -huh. You know, because every time someone is next to her, she's going to want to do that. Yeah. And then what happens is because she doesn't know how to handle that situation, she smells me a little bit and I make one little movement and it triggers her again. You know, because she, ha she has to get basically socialized and desensitized, but we still have to keep in mind that she already has developed some issues. Mm -hmm. So we got to work around that. Yeah. All right, so I haven't done nothing but just get her to this position. Now, before I even bring dogs, I'm going to start to give her instructions. Okay. So, for example, when I'm walking, I usually pick either the left or the right side right. where the dog is going to be all the time. I leave it up to you. Oh, she's on the left. left. On the left. Oh, left. So all we're going to do is reinforce that. So again, remember what I told you, guiding her with positive reinforcement, using a little bit of pressure to reinforce it. Okay. So, so when you say positive reinforcement, no treats? It doesn't have to be treats, but it's just like I'm going to actually guide her and I'm going to encourage her. So, <laughs> right there. That was pressure because she went from being calm, submissive to... I tried that. Have you? I'm like, I've watched all your videos. Yeah, so it's a matter of doing the right way. You know, it's, it's a very controlled amount of pressure. Now watch her complete. She responded right away and I gave, I released right away. This tells her, yes, that's what I want. You know, stop doing that. Now, it works two ways. One, she understands the correction itself. Because I'm like, uh-uh, and she already acknowledges me, you know? And then two, because I'm going to be effectively and successfully stopping her every time, she slows down to begin with. So the last corrections is needed. Uh, Meaning, mm. as she's here today, she's gonna be able to tolerate the dogs go by her. I don't have to correct her every single time. Yeah. The correction is more to establish what I want from her. So if, I, if a dog goes by, she gets reactive, and I tell her, leave it, mm -hmm. but I don't just say it, and I use the pressure to stop her, yeah. the leave it now became powerful. So a few repetitions of that and a dog walks by, I just look at her and tell her, leave it. She knows I can reinforce it, so she's going to choose to not wait for me to have to reinforce it. You know, it's one of those things like pressure is 
annoying, it's uncomfortable. It's not, it doesn't have to be harsh, but it's a consequence. If I tell you leave it, you have to leave it. Right. Now, once they, because if you're using the right techniques really, uh, right away, they respond, the dog responds right away, so you have to use it less often. You know, it's pretty quick, like a few times, and like I said, now your verbal command is powerful. Uh, what is her name again? Nacho. Nacho, yeah. Okay, so right now I'm gonna start giving her guidance. So again, you're gonna see that when I do a little bit of pressure and she's being calm, it's not gonna be like a correction. It's gonna be more redirecting or guiding her. The phone call is a great tool for that. So if I start here, Nacho, come, come, yes, good. Just how I do that little bit of pressure to guide her. I want her to be coming next to me here. Good girl, yes. So of course she's, uh, come, she's an insecure dog by nature. So you can tell she's a little bit unsure, but by using this, this, the right methods here, she's going, this is what's going to help her overcome that. So in the beginning, she's going to be like, oh, I don't really know what to expect from this. But you can tell that even though she's, her body language is scared, she's still responding. Like she's, she's, she's realizing what I'm trying to communicate with her. And then the more she practices that, the more comfortable she becomes. Nacho, come. Come. Good girl. So I'm trying to create loose leash, and every time she's going a little bit too fast, I just have to do a little bit of pressure. But I'm, I'm really like punctual with the directions and the guiding that I need to give her, you know what I mean? So a lot of times what I mean by that is if you're just holding on to the end of the leash like this, and if you really don't prepare her for situations, she doesn't know how to do it herself. So when a dog comes, she's going to be reactive. But if I establish right beforehand, like when I do heel, good girl, loose leash barely holding her. See, she's sniffing. I just told her not to do it by doing one little pull up. Psst. Told her to stop. So just with the sound. Until you want the command, until the command. What is that? You keep it loose to keep the leash? Well, so we'll keep it, we give her credit. If she's doing great, I don't have to be applying tension right, right. because the tension is supposed to tell her like, I need you to stop what you're doing. It should get her attention. So if I say, Nacho, come. No tension, she responded. But if she didn't respond, that would be a little tug to let her know. Now, as long as she's walking next to me the way that I want, I don't have to be applying pressure on her leash. But see, she's going a little too fast, one time. Uh -huh. And that told her, slow down. Psst. Now, this sound, you can tell it's like the dogs are very in tune with that. Uh -huh. So even when they don't know, they learn to respond to that. But what, the most important thing that's going to get your dog to respond is you building confidence that you know, you understand her, and you know how to communicate with her. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing that I establish with her is that, psst, like, see, I, I, the moment she thinks, I'm on top of it. And I'll yeah. teach you how to get better at that by watching her body language. Yeah. So right now, although she's a little bit scared, she's not thinking about running away. She's not worried about everybody here. You know, she's just a little bit unsure of the situation, but she's adapting. She's actually getting calmer and calmer. So I don't have to apply any attention. That means if you don't know that and you're nervous just because there's people around and you're holding her like this, yeah. it's going to make her more nervous. Yeah. Yeah. On the other hand, if someone walks straight towards us right now, and I, the moment she even acknowledges them, see, there's a new dog coming. Let's see what she does. She hasn't seen it yet. Hopefully she looks at it. And see, I'm watching her right there, right there. I didn't, I didn't even have to do much. But I, but I can't do beforehand because see, I'm not correcting her. So if I do this, hey, leave it. It's just a little reminder. And when you have a dog that is really highly reactive like her, you're better off reminding her instead of taking a chance and then letting her be reactive. A lot of people and even a lot of trainers will say don't apply tension, it's going to make your dog tense. Yeah. Yeah. That's when you're raising a puppy that is already stable. This dog is already reactive. So when I do tension, I'm not doing the bad tension, like holding like this. It's a little pressure to let her know, hey, I'm watching you. So that's different. And then if she couldn't look away, it's too much for her, I would make her move away like this. Nacho, come. Good girl. Here. Sit. That's a good girl. Come. Sit. So see how she's laying down every time I put her in a sit? I'm going to keep establishing that when I say sit, I'm not going to expect any, uh, accept anything else. So a little bit of pressure, a little bit forward. And we keep doing this until she actually holds a sit. No, come, sit. Yes, good. And then review. And then if she does it wrong again, we go back to practicing. Sit, yes, good. Because what she's doing there is laying down because she lacks confidence. And the funny thing with these dogs is if you allow them to continue to live in that mentality, it's, it's a mentality, it's a mindset. Mm -hmm. So she gets in a situation like this and all she knows is to lay down and not do anything 
all the either she's reactive or she's shut down you know what i mean so by me making her sit right there and nothing bad is happening it's comfortable it's giving her a way to learn that that's an alternative it's another way that she can do this without laying down super super scared or being reactive yeah. you know so, so when we take her for walks let's say in the neighborhood do we stop at times for a sit position just so she no, not, yeah. not necessarily. So this is a little bit different because she's in a situation where she's naturally scared and she's defensive, right? So that's because you just hold on to the leash. Now, if you correct her and she cowers down and you leave her there, that's the only other alternative she has. Either have to be reactive or have to shut down and lay down, not do anything. So right now she's lay, sitting here pretty stable, you know, she's watching. Now see, she gets a little worried. There's a whining, watch, leave it. See how she was thinking about it? Yeah, yeah. Now, the reason that it's so important to redirect a dog when they do this yeah. is because she, the reason she's looking at that dog whining is because it makes her uncomfortable. She doesn't know what to expect from it. So she's watching, and the more she watches, the more that tension builds up. So whether that dog gets a little bit louder or changing anything, like getting up or coming towards us a little bit, it's gonna tr throw her over the edge. So because I tell her beforehand, while she's calm, it's so much easier to get her attention. Now with the prone collar, if you use correctly, <laughs> sit right there. She would've went crazy if I really yeah. saw yeah. her. That's what I was explaining to you. When you give her that confidence that she can trust you and she has to respect you, like you know what you're doing. Like, you know, that's what I'm telling her here. Because right now, she's doing nothing wrong. You can tell there's no tension. I'm, yeah. I'm her friend hanging out with her. But the moment she even acknowledged the dog that being unstable and it bothered her, I did a little bit of tension to communicate with her. Now, as far as general obedience, again, this dog needs a, a firmer direct approach. So when I, I'm gonna walk this way, I'm gonna tell her, hey, Hugh, good girl. Not letting her snip. So I'm doing the pulling up quickly, leave it. Come on, good girl. And then guidance. She got a little confused right there. And I just told her, no, come on, let's go. I'm gonna approach the dogs a little bit, just so you can see, and then I'm gonna pass her back to you. Okay. And I'm gonna, when I come back around, you're gonna have more hands-on practice, okay? Okay, yeah. Because it's really a matter of you knowing how to uh, yeah, work the leash. So, far. Yeah. Uh, yeah. so right now, I'm gonna bring her close to the dogs that I know are reactive, uh -huh. to show you that it doesn't matter how the other dog is behaving, you focus on your dog. Okay. And you have confidence, like, she, you know, it doesn't even matter the size of the dog, but really the whole thing is like, people give more, more power to the dog by thinking that they're all that, and they don't, because they don't know how to stop them, you know, I understand. But once you realize that it's not that hard to stop them by just knowing the right techniques, yeah. you have more confidence. Yeah. So it really doesn't matter, even if a dog runs off leash right now towards me, I'm not worried, yeah. you know, because I know how to we redirect so her. That See, that, that, yeah. you do the two finger rib jab too? No, it, yeah, so in this case, if a dog is like runs up to me right yeah. now, I would pull her here and give her, you know, directions should be right here. Yeah. So see how she immediately went right uh -huh. there. Yeah. So I want to show you those techniques again. This is just going to give you confidence oh, yeah. that you know yeah. how to handle any situation. Right. The worst thing that can happen is you feel like your hands are tied and you're overwhelmed and you get shocked by something that comes up, you know? Yeah. Okay, so right now we're going to walk her towards dogs. And I really don't know how they're going to behave, but I'm concentrating on my dog here. Leave it. Leave it. Good girl. So this one I know is reactive. Right there. <laughs> Leave it. Good girl. And then we we'll reward her because she's doing good. Good girl. Now every time she's absolutely non-reactive, see how calm you stay? It's like we're not just here wondering like what's gonna happen next. Yeah. Because I know her body language. I know that this is what's gonna happen next. Yeah. You know what I mean? So when you start to understand her body language, you're not just like waiting to see what happens. Yeah. You just kind of really know. So again, even if I bring her closer to her and she becomes more reactive, so just the sound now, it gets her attention. And then reorder because she's just a little bit on short. She's timid, you know, so she needs a lot of, once you correct the, the aggression, which didn't even take much, we gotta build good experiences around other dogs. Now that doesn't mean that she has to be playing with them or receiving treats, none of that. It's just that the fact that she's here, this dog is reactive and she's safe. And I'm calm and she's safe. So she feels safe for being here, meaning she's gonna be less bothered by events, you know, whether it's a dog barking at her or whatever trigger it may be, we show her that it's okay. Now, if the dog is friendly, she can play with them and have a good in a relationship with that dog, that's right. fine. Right. But you have to prepare her for any, any situation that can come up. All right, so right now I'm gonna pass her back to you. Watch right there, see how she's, uh, she saw that dog. Now, one thing that you have to keep in mind when you're holding on to her, right. again, if you, she's making huge progress already, right. if you relax too much and you just hold on to the end of the leash, 
and your dog comes too close to her, she's gonna be reactive again. So the most important thing is to be really aware of your surroundings because when you have a dog that is still in training, uh -huh. you have to constantly be practicing the, the, the new good behaviors yeah, instead yeah. of letting her practice the bad ones. Uh -huh. And the only way to do that is by being prepared. Yeah. I know her trigger, so the moment a dog comes from far away, I'm already watching her, uh -huh. you know? But calmly, I'm not blocking, yeah. I'm not pinched, I'm just watching and I'm watching my whole surroundings. So as the dog gets a little closer, if she starts to even stare at them, even in a calm way, I'm just gonna redirect her. I, I, get, I told her what to do, I told her to move on, come over here, sit, good. She's never been like, this is beautiful, this is all I mean. Yeah, she needs a, little, a lot of like confidence building that's gonna yeah. make it a lot better, yeah, yeah. Uh, but we're gonna work on that okay. too. Okay. Right. okay, so keep her a little bit away from the okay. other dogs. Sure, yeah. And make sure, again, see, there's no, t so you give, apply tension and then release the tension when she's good. Okay. And all, when you park her, just park her like in a sit. So that way she's not pacing around and confused. That way she knows yeah. you expect her to be right there next to you. Okay. And it doesn't even have to be in a sit, like she might want to lay down eventually. You can let her, but, but make her stay next to you. Okay. She's going to naturally stop trying to pace around because you're restricting her in that position. And it becomes really easy for her to understand it. She doesn't mind doing that. Yeah. But if you let her pace, then she just gets carried away with that. And she doesn't know how to stop. Yeah. You know, so she's always like going for the next thing instead of relaxing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so right there, really quick, see how you're just holding on? You gotta do a firm, firm pop, a little bit firmer. So see how you're, you're kind of hesitant, you know, it has to be more... This is really important because when I approach her, she already knows. Yeah. Because I did it one time correctly. Right. Yeah. So what you're gonna do is here from the side, you're gonna almost step to the side and do like this, a pop. So you get her attention. Yeah, I, okay. But if we have to practice on that, you, yeah. you don't yeah. have to... Don't keep doing it a bunch of times. Instead, just take a few seconds and then do it again. Yeah. But kind of fast at the same time, you know oh, what I mean? Because okay. you want to stop her at the moment when right, she's practicing right. the bad behavior. Okay. Yeah, this is life changing. It's awesome. Alright, I'll see you next time. Thank you, Gusto. You're, You're awesome. Appreciate it.